We're now going to move on and discuss character strings. When we're creating our programs, we nearly always have to use fields defined as character strings. And in SAP, there are two elementary data types used for character strings. These are data type C and data type N. We'll first have a look at data type C. And to do this as we go along, I'll create a brand new program called Z Character Strings. The data type C is used to hold alphanumeric characters and it has a minimum length of one character and a maximum length of 65,535 characters. So first of all we'll define a field of data type C. And when we define this data type, once we key in the field name we then without any spaces, use open brackets, put in the length of the field, so this will be 10 characters, and then we declare the actual type, which is type C. Now this is the long form of declaring a field of type C, and what I mean by that is because this field is a generic data type, the system has some default values that it can use to save us from typing out the full length of the declaration. So for example, if we declare a new field, let's call this my car 2 and I want this field just to be one character, well the default value for the size of the field is actually one character. So I could get away with out declaring the size in brackets. And because the character field is the default type used by the system to declare a field, I can even get away without declaring the type. So I can end this declaration of this variable just by keying in the field name. So this has the same effect. declaring the field just like this. So let's remove this. Now if you recall we created a table called Z employees and in that table we declared various fields of type character. One of these fields was Z surname. So if I create a table statement and key in our Z employees table. I'll just use forward navigation. And there we can see Z surname is type car with a length of 40. Well, we can replicate that declaration within our ABAP program. So I'll step back. And here, instead of my car 2, can create a field called Z employees with a length of 40 and a type C. Oops. And that has exactly the same effect. And if you remember also back to one of the previous videos, a short form of doing this. is just to use the like statement. So this will declare Z employees like the actual field we declared in the table. Let's do this too so it checks correctly. Oh, 
I've already um, do apologize. So now you know how to declare a field of type C. Let's look at the other generic character string data type. And that is data type N. So thinking back again to when we declared our table, we created a field called Z employees, which was the employee number. So if we go to the table and have a look at this, actually it's just called employee, but you can see we declared the field of type numc with a length of eight. Now numc, or the number data type, is a special data type in that it is treated just like a character type, but there is an inbuilt rule to only allow numeric characters. And when data is moved into this field, it is right aligned, just like a normal numeric type field. This data type is ideal when we only want to use numbers within the field and we have no intention of carrying out any type of calculation. So let's go back to the program and see how we would declare this field in our app. So as usual, start off with data. We'll call the field Z number one with a data type of N. And just like previously in this example up here, we could use the like statement and refer back to the actual field in our table and it would have exactly the same effect. Now one additional point is this field does differ a little bit from the data type C in that the initial default value of this field is zero instead of space. And that's it, there's not much more to declaring these types of fields. So let's move on and see what we can actually do with them. As with many other programming languages, ABAP gives you the functionality to interrogate and manipulate the data held within character strings. And here we're going to go through some of the popular statements that ABAP provides to carry out these functions. So here's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at concatenating strings together, condensing, finding the length of a specific string, replacing characters within a string, searching for specific characters, using the shift statement to move the contents of a field left and right, splitting character strings and using the subfield functions to access specific characters within a string. So let's first of all take a look at concatenating strings together. And the first thing I'm going to do, just so our program doesn't fail, is just turn this group of statements into comments. Let's tidy the code up a little bit as well. We don't need these things up here. The concatenate statement allows us to join two character strings together to form a third string. And it's fairly easy to understand. And we start off by using the word concatenate. And then it goes in the form of field one, field two, and we can carry on with field three, field four, field five, etc. And then we choose a destination that we want the output string to go to. And then we can have destination one. We can also add in an additional term called separated by to allow us to insert a specific value in between each field into our destination field. So it would be would help if I could spell. There we go. And then we would have a, a separator field. Now some things to note 
is if the destination field is shorter than the overall length of the input fields, the character string will be truncated to the length of the destination field. So make sure when using the concatenate statement, you are using string data types, which as we have already discussed, can hold more than 65,000 characters. So let's have a look at a specific example of some ABAP code using the concatenate statement. So you can see I've added some code and I've commented out the definition that we uh, created just a moment ago. We'll go through the code line by line so you know exactly what's going on. So the first statement we've got is the data statement. And because we're declaring five fields altogether, I'm chaining the data statement together so we don't have to keep writing the word data out multiple times. So the first field is title. We're declaring a length of 15 characters. It is of data type C with a value of Mr. And we have surname, 40 characters long. And the surname will be Smith. And we have forename, 40 characters again. First name of Joe. And then we declare a separator field here. I've just called it SEP. And you'll notice I haven't declared the length and I haven't declared a value or a type. So this will take on the actual defaults that the system uses, which is a character string with a length of one character. And the last field is destination. And I've just declared it 200 characters long and of data type C. So now we get onto the code. And the first thing I'm going to do, just so you get into the habit of this yourselves, is bring up the ABAP help for the concatenate statement. So here we can see the actual syntax used. And as we declared earlier in the definition, just up here, we do concatenate F1 to whatever number of fields we want to concatenate into G. And you can see the separated by is an additional option that we can use with this statement if we want to. So I'll close it down. So the first line of code we've got, we're concatenating title, surname and forename into the field destination. And we're going to write out the results of destination with an underline underneath. So I'll do a check and we'll test the program out. And there we can see Mr. Smith Joe with the underline. So you notice a couple of things here. All the characters have been concatenated together. So we've got no space and it's left aligned the result. And that's because we define the result as a character field. If we'd have used a data type of N for number, everything would have been right aligned. So we'll step back. Now to tidy this up, we can use the separated by addition. So in this case, we'll add in a blank space between each field when it gets populated into destination. So I have an example of that below. Here we go. So you can see the same statement, but we've got the additional separated by SEP at the end. Then we'll write out destination again and underline it. Do a check and a test. And now we can see it's inserted the blank separator between our three fields. The next statement we'll take a look at is the condensed statement. So let me bring these up here. Our ABAP programs quite often have to deal with long text fields that contain unwanted spaces. So this is where the condensed statement can be used to remove these blank characters. The definition of the condensed statement is very simple. So first, if we start off with typing out the condensed statement, we can then have a look at the search help and see the basic form. 
So here you can see condense and the field name. And there's just one addition we can add, which is the no gaps. So I'll key in a line of ABAP code and we'll go through it and test the program out and see the output. Okay, so I've added some code in here. I'll just point it out. Up at the top in the data statement, I've extended the number of fields I have defined by creating a new field called space name that is 20 characters long. And you can see I've given it a value of Mr. Joe Smith. And you'll notice I've put many spaces between the three individual words. Then coming down, I've added a comment just showing the definition of the condensed statement with the optional no gaps, which we'll come to in a second. And then the basic output. And I'll add in just a bit of code to write it out to our report window. And we're done. So it's very, very simple. The condensed statement will take out the blank spaces between our three words, but not fully. What it will do, it will leave one space between each word. So we should end up with Mr. Space Joe Space Smith. Let's save the report and test it out. Here you can see Mr. Joe Smith with one space. Now the addition is no gaps and no doubt you can work out exactly what this is going to do. Let's make it look nice. So this one will do exactly the same, but where we were left with one space between each word, it should then bring everything together. So there are no spaces at all. And as you can see, a very simple statement, nice and easy to code. Now moving on, let's have a look at finding the length of a string. Now to do this, we actually use a function instead of a statement. And this is a very simple function called string length. So I will add some code and then we'll go through the statement and output the results. So the first thing to do is declare a new data field. We'll call it len for length and a data type of i just to hold the integer value that will represent the length of the string we are trying to interrogate. Then down to the code, we can add the following three lines. And you'll see it looks very simple. We have the field we have just defined, and that will contain the length of the surname field. And it is this string function, this string length function, strlen, that will look at the surname field and move the length of the string into the len field we have declared. Now, if we take a quick peek at the surname field, you can see it currently holds the word Smith, which is five characters in length. So when we execute this report, the len field will contain the number five, and that will be output at the end of this write statement. So I've included some text and then the len field at the end. So let's check the report for syntax errors. Everything's good. And we'll execute the report. And there we have the length of the surname field is five. Very simple. Now let's take a look at replacing character strings. I will go ahead and add some code and go through the explanation of how it works. So the first thing we need to look at is the new data statement I've declared. And this is surname two, and it's going to be a length of 40 characters. And note, I haven't used the type declaration here because the system will use the default type C. Now down to the logic itself, the first thing I'm doing is moving a value into the surname2 field. 
and this is Mr. Comma Joe Smith. Then we're using the replace statement and we're doing a replace the comma with a full stop into our surname to field. Then we'll write out the results. First of all, let's pretty the code up and then test it out. And there you can see the output is Mr. Full Stop Joe Smith. Now, one thing to note here is with the replace statement, it will only replace the first occurrence in the string. And what I mean is, if our string had Mr. Comma Joe Comma Smith, only the first comma would be replaced. To show you that, let's test it out. And there you can see, only the first occurrence in the string has been replaced. So how do you replace all the occurrences? Well, that's where we could use something we will come on to a little bit later on. When we have a look at loops, you could use a while loop so that our replace statement can be executed multiple times dependent on a specific piece of logic that we add to our loop statement. I'll show you very quickly here, but we won't go into too much detail on it because we'll cover it later on. Oops, sorry, I've done it in the wrong place. There we go. Let's pretty it up. So in this case, when we execute the program, we can see the comma has been replaced in both positions within our text. And that's because the replace statement was actually executed two times. We will now take a look at searching for specific character strings within fields. We use the statement search to do this, unsurprisingly, and it has a very simple form. So we can key in the word search. Then we enter the field we want to search. So in our case, let's use surname again, or surname two. And then we specify four, and then the actual search string itself. So let's say one, two, three, and a full stop. Now this type of statement is a little different to the others in that we're not specifying a variable to hold any result. What actually happens with the search statement is two system variables are used. The first one, sy sub rc, which identifies whether the search was successful or not. And the second system variable is sy fdpos. And if the search was successful, this field is set to the position of the character string that we are searching for in surname2. I will go ahead and add some code that will hopefully explain this a little bit better. And we'll look at different variations that will introduce how these system variables can be used to determine the success of the individual search. So if we stick with our surname2 field, Obviously, we're not going to find a string of one, two, three. So let's change this. And we'll say search for the literal string Joe. Now, while I remember, because surname two does get changed in the statements above, let's reset it right here. We'll change the content so it's just Mr. Joe Smith. So our first search statement just looks for the word Joe and it should be successful. So what we will do is start to create a small report section that shows us the values of the system variables. I'll just pause the recording to do this. And once complete, we can step through it line by line. So first off, we're using the surname2 variable as before. 
I'm just writing I'm just writing out a line here to show the actual search string that we are using. And then we come to our first search statement. So this is search surname two four and we've got Joe with some spaces after in quotes. So what this is saying is we want to search for the word Joe, but the trailing spaces with the way we're using search here are going to be ignored. And then the output will show a literal string. So what we are searching for. And then we're going to output the system variables. SY sub RC, the actual value, then SY FD POS, and the actual value. So in this case, we should get a sub RC equal to zero, which means it was a successful search. And the position of the search string will show the position offset in accordance with where it appears within the surname two field. Then the next one, we have a very similar search term, but this time the system will not ignore blank spaces. So the system will actually search for Joe with, I think it's four spaces after the letter E. And if we look at our surname two field, there's only one space after the letter E. So it should return sub RC equal four, which means an unsuccessful search. And because it was unsuccessful, then the SYFD pos value will be zero. Then the next search, this is using a wildcard. And the way we have the search defined here, it will search for any word within the string that ends with ITH. Now because we have Smith and it ends with ITH, it should be a successful search and we should get the offset position in the FD pause system variable. And the last example, it's another wildcard search, but this time we're going to be searching for any word starting with SMI. And the variable we are searching does contain the word Smith. So we should get a successful search. And again, the SYFD pause system variable will be filled with the offset value relating to the position of the word. So let's run this test and we'll have a look at the output. We'll all become, and hopefully you'll be able to see exactly what I'm explaining and you'll see the results in the SY fields. So we can see the search results. Here we're showing natural search string. In the first search example, we can see it was a successful search because SY sub RC is set to zero and the FD pos value is set to three, which relates to the third character in our string. That's the offset. So the search term Joe would start one character after the offset value. Now the next example, we were searching for Joe again, but we included spaces. And that's the surname two field did not contain enough spaces. It was a failed search. And the SY sub RC field is set to four to indicate that. And because it was failed, SY FD pos is set to zero. The third example with a wildcard search where we're looking for any word ending in ITH, it was successful and it's showing the word starts after the value seven offset. So if, so if we look at the search term, we can see the offset value number seven is a space after the letter E of Joe, telling us that the next word in the string is what we were searching for. And the last example, very similar, but this is showing words starting with SMH. Exactly the same, successful search indicated by sub RC equals zero, and the word Smith is the word that contains SMI, and again, it's the same position starting one character after the position seven offset.
That's four different variations of the search command, very useful throughout your programs when dealing with long character strings. Let's now focus our attention on the shift statement. This statement is quite simple. It allows you to move the contents of a character string, left or right, character by character. So as an example, let's see how we can move the contents of a field to the left, deleting leading zeros. So first of all, I'll declare a new variable. Let's call this one employee num for employee number. We'll make it 10 characters in length. First thing we'll do, we'll set the contents of this field to zero 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 six five four three two one. So we'll fill in every character of the field, and what we are going to do with the example is remove the leading zeros and shift everything else to the left hand side. So to do this, we just type the statement shift in our field name and we'll define we want to shift the contents to the left whilst deleting the leading zeros now before we run this I'll bring up the search help for the shift statement And you will see there are various variants showing that you can shift to the left, to the right, by a specific number of places, and so on. So let's go back to our example. Tidy up the code. Create a statement to write some output. a check oops my mistake in the data statement there okay so let's now test the code and we'll see the output There you can see the actual output has deleted the leading zeros and moved everything to the left hand side. By clicking on the field here you can see it is left justified and we do have spaces at the end of the field. I encourage you to try different variations of the shift statement because there's a lot you can do with this statement. It does become a very handy tool when you have to deal with strings of data. Just before we move on, I'll just do another few examples. This one, I'll show the shift statement in its simplest form. And the output we will see here, because we haven't specified anything after our variable name, it will use the default value of moving from right to left and the default number of spaces is one so it will move to the left one character so on the test you can see we've only got three zeros in the output and it's moved all the contents to the left and left us with one space at the end The next example, we will use the addition circular. And what this does, if we leave it with the default values, it'll move everything to the left, one character, 
but the character that is pushed out will be reinserted at the other end of the string. So we should see three zeros, six five four three two one zero in the result. And here you can see exactly that. We've got the three zeros and then the leading zero that has been pushed out has been inserted in the far right column. Next up, we're going to take a look at the split statement. You use the split statement if you want to separate the contents of a field into two or more fields. The statement is fairly simple to use, so I'll go ahead and create some code and then we'll go through it line by line. OK, I've created the code. And the first section you'll see is that I've created some new data statements called myString and then A1, A2 and A3 and SEP2 which is a separator. So let's go through it. The myString variable is 30 characters in length, then the A1, A2, A3 are 10 characters in length, then the separator is 2 characters and you can see I've assigned a value of double asterisk. And that's just going to be used to identify where we need to separate our string. So I'm going to move the data statements into position at the top of the program so we keep it all in order. There we go. And now we'll take a look at the split statement itself. So I'm going to show you two examples. And the first one is I'm populating my string with a value of a leading space. Then what you can see, one, two, three, four, asterisk, asterisk, space, A, B, C, D, space, asterisk, asterisk, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to write out the string on the report just so we can see it in the results with a blank line and then comes the split statement. Now this statement starts with the word split and then you add the string that you want to split. So in our case we're going to split my string. Then we have the addition of at and following at we have a separator. Now this could be a literal so I could do this but in this example, we're just going to use a predefined variable, sep2, which contains the double asterisk. Then we got into, and then these are the fields we want the split contents to be written to. So what we'll end up with, if we go through it, I've specifically made the string look a little bit odd, making sure we have a leading space, then we have an asterisk, then space, and we have a space before the asterisk. So you can see how the split statement actually populates the fields the data wants to go into. So I'll execute the code and we'll go through the results. So here we go. So our split statement is splitting a leading zero one, two, three, four, asterisk, asterisk, and it's going to split at the first double asterisk. So we can see our first A1 results field does contain the leading space. It has then been split at the double asterisk, and you'll note the result has filled in blank spaces for the rest of the field. We then have the second field filled with from the blank space all the way to the blank space before the next double asterisk. And this is A2 and also it's filled with trailing spaces. Then the last result is 6789 and you'll see there's no space after the double asterisk so that has gone one column further to the left 
and filled the remainder of the field with blank spaces again. So that's quite straightforward. Let's go back to the code. And what we'll do this time is take a look at this, this second example. And the way this differs is I've added another set of double asterisks for our separator and then added some more characters at the end of our string. So what I'm trying to show here is we want to split the contents of my string into three fields. But when we look at the contents, because we're using the double asterisk as separator, we've actually got enough to fit into four fields. So what the system does in this case is for the last field that's going to be filled, it will actually contain the remainder of the string as well. So we'll execute the code, have a look at the results, and hopefully all will become clear. Here we go. So the difference here is our third field is going to be filled with 6789. But because we have double asterisk again, we're trying to split the remainder of my string into another field. Well, we haven't declared a fourth field. So this becomes the remainder and it gets appended into the last field we have declared. So it's important to keep in mind that if your separator would result in more splits than the number of fields that are available for the contents to be moved into, then the remainder will be put in the last field. If the last field isn't big enough, then it will be truncated. One last point, just to note that if the field you are trying to split does not contain the valid separator string, then the whole contents of that field will be moved to the first field that you were trying to split the contents into. It's now time to have a look at what we call subfields. Now we have the option within our app of referring to specific characters within a field. This is referred to as processing subfields, whereby we reference a specific character position within the field itself. Let's have a look at an example and we'll go through it line by line so you become familiar with how to use this. So I've added some code here. And the first section shows we're declaring three new variables, international telephone number, country code and telephone number. And you can see the different size of each field. In the first line we have, I am assigning a character string to international telephone number, writing the results to the screen, followed by a blank line. And then we come down to the actual subfield processing itself. So our first line of code shows that we are filling the country code field with the first three characters of the international telephone number field. That's quite straightforward. Let's have a look at our second line. In this example, we can see the field telephone number is going to be filled with 13 characters of the international telephone number field starting after the fourth character. So how we'd write this is telephone number equals international telephone number plus four, which means start after the fourth character, open brackets, 13 close brackets, which references 13 characters. Then we're going to move the output to the screen. Then the last example we have is instead of just moving specific characters of the international telephone number field to telephone number, we're actually going to be updating the country code subfields with the literal 01. So how we write this is our country code field plus one, which means start after the first character and fill the next two characters. So the country code field is only three characters in total anyway. So in effect, it's gonna fill the last two characters of this field with the value 01. And the last line of code is just going to produce the output on the screen for us to check. 
So first of all, let me move this data statement to the top of the program where it belongs. And I'll do the necessary formatting. Have a quick check of the program, make sure the syntax is correct. Activate it, and then we'll run the test. And here we can see the results. So first of all, we're outputting the full international telephone number to the screen. Then the next field, the country code field, we filled with the first three characters of the international telephone number field. The next one, the actual telephone number, we referenced 13 characters after the fourth character. So the fourth character was the dash sign. So we can see the next 13 characters starts with the open brackets and ends with the number six. In our last example, updated the country code field, but as a subfield. So it only updated the second and third character of the field. So that's quite straightforward. And you'll see this used a lot in SAP programs. And you'll probably find yourself needing to refer to subfields quite often. And instead of creating brand new fields, holding values there, it is often a lot easier just to use the subfield syntax instead of holding additional values as variables in memory.